Game Hack in 105. In this video, I'll show you a really easy way to stop scanning for the same values over and over again every time you reload a game. Now, if you start getting lost at any point in the video, go check out the videos in green. But alright, let's get into it. Now, the first thing we gotta do as always is attach cheating into the game. And in GTA 5, I'm gonna give myself infinite ammo, but the techniques I'll be showing you work on a lot of other things and in a lot of other games too. So to get started, we gotta scan for the address of what we're after, and in GTA 5, ammo is the total of these two numbers combined. And we could just use a calculator to total this up so we can scan for it, but we can also just type it in like this over here, and Cheat Engine will actually do the math for us. Then, as usual, after the first scan is done, we need to make a change to the value of the game, and then scan for the new value. Which leaves me with just one result. So let's add that to the address list, change the value, and then freeze it. And it looks like I have the right address for ammo, but notice that the clip amount is still going down when I fire. So while I do have infinite ammo, I still gotta reload whenever the clip gets empty. So let's scan for the clip value so we can fix that. But first I need to change the value type because the clip value in GTA 5 is a 2 byte. And now we just gotta do a few exact value scans and narrow down the results as much as possible. And it looks like the second one from the top is the one we want, so let's test it to make sure. And there we go, now we've got real infinite ammo. But these addresses only control the values during this loaded session of the game. So if I were to shut it down right now, I'd need to rescan for these values again the next time I fire the game up. And to understand why that happens and more importantly how to fix that, let's take a closer look at how these memory addresses work. A memory address is like a home address. It has numbers and letters, so its specific location can be found among a bunch of other addresses in memory. And when you load a game, the game values are sent to these addresses, where in most games the values pretty much stay in their originally assigned addresses until the game is shut off. But the next time the game gets loaded, the values typically get assigned to new addresses, so any addresses we found before are normally useless once we shut off a game. But in a lot of games, the values have a source or base address that doesn't change unless the game gets patched or updated, which normally happens a lot less than we shut down or restart a game. Now, putting this as simply as I can for this video, the source or base address doesn't actually store something like the health value. Instead, it will usually store or point to other addresses, which is why they're also sometimes called pointers. So by finding the base pointer of something like health, Cheat Engine can automatically follow the path of the address pointed to by the base and find the new final address of the thing we care about. And alright, I skipped over a lot of the technical details about this, but this should be good enough for what we're trying to do right now, so let's head back to Cheat Engine. And what we're going to do is right click the ammo address and we're going to generate a pointer map for it. And I'll just give it a name and hit save, and Cheat Engine is now scanning all the potential pointer paths for the ammo address. And now that it's done, I'll do the same thing for the clip address. And alright, we've got a pointer map generated for each address, and now we need to restart the game and get the new ammo and clip addresses, and the reason for that is because most of the pointers and pointer maps are not going to be stable enough to work every time we restart the game. But by having at least two pointer maps, we can do a scan to find out which pointers are valid for each set of addresses and weed out a lot of unstable pointers that way. But before we restart the game, let me show you a quick way to find these addresses again. Right click an address and then choose find out what accesses this address. And actually hang on, before you do that, go to Edit, Settings, then Debugger Options and check which debugger you're using. Normally you're going to want this set to use the VEH debugger. So with that done, now go back and right click the address, choose what accesses the address, and then hit Yes. And now we've got this new window here. So let's drag this off to the side for right now, then make the game window active and unpause the game. And now we see some stuff get loaded in the window here. And what we're looking at is some game code. Now, if you don't see anything loading this window, double check that you didn't pause the game with Cheat Engine and try firing your gun or using a spell or whatever will make a change to the value of whatever you're hacking in the game and that should load up some game code. But alright, we're not really going to get into game code into the Game Hacking 200 series, but we're here right now because if we click on a line and then hit add to the code list, we can save the code. And in this little window, we can come to the left of the colon and name the code. And now if I get this window out of the way, we can click advanced options down here and as long as we don't close Cheat Engine, we can pull up a copy of the code anytime we want. And I'll do the same thing with the clip address real quick. And now I can restart the game. 
And now, of course, the two addresses I found earlier are no more good, but I can reattach Cheat Engine to the game, click Advanced Options, and then right-click one of the code lines, then click this option right here and hit Yes to load the new addresses into the window. And again, you may need to make the game window active before you'll see anything in the window. And now if I just double-click on the address, it'll get added to the address list. And if I freeze the value in Cheat Engine, we can see that the ammo is frozen in place in the game. So I'll do the same for the code involved with the clip address, and notice that the value is all jacked up. And it looks like this because the display isn't set to 2 byte. And once I fix that, we see the right value. And once I add it to the address list and test it, we can see that we definitely have the correct new addresses, and we got them without needing to do any more scans at all. Now, sometimes when you do this, a lot of addresses will get loaded in this window, and if that happens, you can click the value column header to put everything in order by the value, and then look for the address that matches the value of what you're looking for. But alright, once you have the next set of addresses, give each one a name, and then generate a pointer map for each one. And alright, with all the pointer maps generated, I'll organize this real quick, and then click on the first address and hit pointer scan for the address. And in the scan option window that appears, check use save pointer map. And here's the really important part. You gotta make sure you match the pointer map with the address you use to generate the pointer map. And then check the box to compare with other save pointer maps, click the folder icon, and choose the next pointer map you generated for the same thing. So in my case, I right clicked ammo 1 for the first pointer map, so I need to choose the ammo 2 pointer map to compare it with. And now click the drop down under address and choose the address you generated the second pointer map with. And alright, once you have the pointer maps loaded in, click OK at the bottom, give the pointer scan a name, then just hit save, and Cheat Engine will now scan through all the pointers and all the maps you've got loaded in, and then when it's done, it'll load all the results here. Now, if you don't see any results load here, it could be that you need to increase one or both of these options in the settings window. Just be aware that the more you increase these numbers, the longer the pointer scan will take. And generally speaking, you probably shouldn't increase the max offset value by more than a thousand or so, and the max level by no more than a few at a time between trying to scan for pointers. But also, be aware that the pointer scanner just doesn't work well with some games at all, no matter what settings you use, which kinda sucks, but it is what it is. And later in the series, we'll take a look at some more advanced techniques to deal with those kinds of games. And okay, even though I compared the pointer maps for two addresses, we still end up with a lot of results, and most of these won't work reliably all the time. So, another thing we can do to narrow down these results even more is take another look at the code that is accessing the address, and you want to make sure that you right-click the address that still has the right value. And then once you load in the code, take a look at the number that's inside the brackets, which in my case is 20. And this 20 is the last offset of the pointer path for the address accessed by these instructions, and because these instructions are pulling up consistently for the address, we'll have a good chance of getting stable pointers if we make sure that the pointers we choose from the scanner end with the same offset. And we can remove the pointers that don't end with the matching offset by copying the current active address, and then by hitting pointer scanner at the top, then hitting rescan memory, and then pasting in the active address, checking must end with offsets, and typing in the offset we see in brackets. Then we can hit OK, and I'll just save over the other scan. And now we're left with around 20 pointers. But even some of these might not be stable, so I'm going to double click like 10 of these one at a time to add to the address list, just to try and make sure I end up with at least one of them that works all the time. And since I'll be adding the clip pointers to the list in a minute, I'll rename all the pointers by clicking the top one, shift clicking the bottom, and then by double clicking the description of the dark blue highlight and typing in a name. And all right, now I'll right click clip one, Hit pointer scan for this address, check use save pointer map, choose the clip 1 pointer map, then load in the pointer map for clip 2, match it with the clip 2 address, then hit ok at the bottom and name and save the pointer scan. And once it's done we get our pointers, but these values don't match the value of our clip. And one thing causing that is that the display type is set to 4 bytes, so let's change that to 2 byte. But even after doing that, the values still don't match the clip value. And if we take a closer look at the address list in the pointer scan window, we can see that it doesn't match the active address that's holding the clip value. And that means these results are no good. So let's close the pointer scan window and start a new pointer scan. But this time before we do anything else, check show advanced options and then uncheck addresses must be 32-bit aligned. And I'm not going to get into the details of memory alignment in this video, but here's a quick tip. If the last digit of the address is not a 0, 4, 8, or C, then you'll definitely need to uncheck this option. But also, if the value type of the address is not a 4 byte or a float, you might still need to uncheck the option if you're having issues. But okay, now when I load in the pointer maps and run the pointer scan, 
When it's done, we see the correct address and we see the correct value because the display type matches the right value type. And now we can check the code accessing the clip address, copy the active address, run another scan with the last offset that matches what we see over here, and then narrow down the pointer results further. But notice over here that we have some of these base addresses that don't match the main process name, and we don't want to pick any of these if we can avoid it. So if we click on the column name, we can sort the list and put all the thread stacks at the top, and then easily avoid them as we add other pointers to the list. And if you end up with this many results, I'd recommend adding at least 20 or so pointers to the address list. And alright, now it's time to make sure our pointers work. So let's restart the game, and then reattach Cheat Engine to it. And the addresses we used before no longer have our values, but some of the pointers do. And I'll go down the list and remove all the ones without the correct values, but before you do this, double check that you have the right value type set. And alright, I'd recommend that you keep all the pointers that are valid, and as you play through the game, just keep removing any that you see aren't sticking very well. Alright, before you close Cheat Engine, make sure you save all the work you just put in by clicking File and saving everything in the address list as a cheat table. And once you do that, you can click the folder icon whenever you want to load your cheat table. Which is pretty cluttered and disorganized right now, and we really only have like two things in our table. So in Game Hacking 106, we'll take a look at how to organize our cheat tables, set up hotkeys to make some custom cheats, and more. So be sure to subscribe, hit the bell, and turn on YouTube notifications so you don't miss it. And as always, thanks for watching. See you next time.